Hi, friends, and welcome to the weekly Wisdom Wednesday podcast, and thanks so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Phil Caffey, for the next few minutes, and I hope that you are going to enjoy uh, and get some inspiration from uh, what I will share today. Uh, sorry, I, what, I didn't give a, a verbal podcast last week. My voice was a little raspy, so I did a written blog. Um, so, But you can still access that at philcaffey.com slash blogs, and you can still read that there. <clears throat> this week, I wanted to talk about um, a thought that appeared in my mind um, that I thought was kind of pertinent to today. Um, so um, our scripture passage for today's uh, podcast comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, and it comes from one of the Ten Commandments, which I think are so necessary to... Uh, keep in the forefront of our mind nowadays, um, but and nevertheless, um, I want to point out one of the Ten Commandments um, that uh, that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. So Exodus twenty chapter uh, chapter twenty, verse seventeen it says, "You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servant." his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I think a lot of times today we are struggling with envy, greed, and jealousy. Um, I know that we sometimes we don't covet people's things uh, per se. Uh, maybe we covet people's power or their status or their looks or a relationship that they have with somebody, or they might covet um, what they never had. And that's what I want to talk about today. So the other day, um, I had this thought, and I've been working really hard on my fitness goals um, over the past couple of years. And I noticed that by my doing that, yeah, I've been trying to meet those, but I noticed that I was coveting what I did not have in my past. And this quote came to my mind, and I believe it's a quote I came up with, but I said, forgiveness of what you did not have in the past will help negate feelings of jealousy or envy in the present. So I'm going to repeat that again. Forgiveness of what you did not have in the past will help negate feelings of jealousy or envy in the present. So I envied the fact that I did not look a certain way, which helped me to get to where I am today. But that envy um, became where I was mad at myself. That's not healthy. Or... Um, and so I, I, you know, I, I wished when I was a child that I was pushed to do uh, sports or more, be more active, uh, but I wasn't. And that's, that's really nobody's fault. Um, so I realized I was coveting. But at the same time, I need to forgive what did not occur in my past. I need to forgive the fact that I was not active. I need to forgive the fact that I made poor eating choices. I need to forgive the fact that I did not make wise choices. So if I forgive that, then I can I can try to move on past that and not be envious or have feelings of jealousy uh, towards those that are further along than I am right now. And we're all along a, a different journey for, for whatever reason um, at our own time that God gives us. And a lot of times, you know, if we don't have something right away, it often it often teaches us how to get to where we need to go um, in a in a better way, and we're able to relate to those to other people around us who are maybe struggling to meet their goals as well. And so, you know, I think a lot of times today we're 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 trying to uh, we want people's status, we want people's um, relationship, maybe they have with with somebody that of importance. Um, and so we try to 
do everything we can to get involved and maybe we resent somebody because you know they they know somebody or we resent somebody because of the, a gift or a talent that they have that we don't have but god has given us all gifts and talents for the mission that he's called us to do and i think that's so important to remember that we might not have the same gift as so and so and they won't have the same gift as us and there's a reason for that god has wired us all in a certain way to accomplish his mission here on earth as it is in heaven if i did the same thing as so and so and so and so did the same thing as me that'd make the world boring if we all did the same thing so i think we need to celebrate the fact that we all are gifted in different ways uh, and we all have different things to bring to the table. Um, that's what make this, makes this world a wonderful place. Um, and there's nothing to say that we cannot aspire to be like certain people or aspire to uh, look a certain way or get to know other people. But when it becomes a feeling of envy or greed or covet, coveting, then that's, that's sinful. Um, because we're wanting what we what we don't have um, in an unhealthy way. Um, but if we go about it with good intention, if we go about it with um, you know a pure motive, then I think that that is a whole a whole different ball game. So you shall not cover your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So. I, I also think that we often covet nowadays that people have more money. You know, we often covet nowadays that um, people, you know, are very successful in their careers or um, maybe just in, in life in general. But like I said, we're all along our path at our own pace. It's not a race. And that's something I've also been learning in my fitness journey that it's not a race. Fitness has taught me so much, um, not even in terms of getting stronger or healthier, but in terms of life lessons. Um, we're not in a race against anybody. Um, that's been a, a huge uh, learning point for me. We're not in a race uh, because when we think we're in a race, we start rushing, we start not doing things adequately, we start not doing things um, in, a, in a way that uh, we're going to get the, the quality out of doing things um, because we're rushing. And so I think that when we, when we don't take our time and we, and we think we're in a constant race, we are not doing ourselves any good. And it gives us anxiety. Uh, the world gives us enough anxiety with what's going on. Um, so we're, we're, the only race you have is with yourself. And that, 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 that's, a not, that's not a race worth fighting. Um, God will get you to where you need to go. You just trust in him and leave all the consequences to him. Um, and so we, we really need to quit giving us ourselves a race against other people when maybe they are not even further, they're not even at a place that they want to be. Um, and being in a race with other people is also a sign of jealousy or envy. Um, because why? Why are we trying to do that? Is there something we're trying to prove? What is our motive behind that? To say I'm better than you or I did it before you? You know, that that's not, that's not Christ-like. Um, so I, I think that Greed, envy, and jealousy are a lot more common uh, nowadays than we'd like to uh, give credence to. Um, just look at our political scene. It's, it reeks of jealousy, um, which in, terms, in turn reeks dishonesty, uh, fabrication of stories, slander. It just, you know, jealousy is more prevalent than we think. Um, we got people making up stories about each other uh, because they want a certain position or power. And, and what good does that do? 
it, 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 it makes our world a horrible place when we just aren't satisfied with what God has already provided us. And maybe there's, you know, there's a, there's a quote. Uh, let me pull it up. Uh, it's in Daniel. I believe it's chapter 1. Okay, it's in chapter 2, and and I love this quote um, from Daniel, and he says, Praise be, and this is chapter 2, starts in verse 20. It says, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes the time and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power, and you have made known to me what is what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. I love that it says he disposes of kings and raises up others, and he's the one that changes the times and the seasons. So God is sovereign. He's in charge of it all. He... He's got us right where he wants us. Okay, we've made maybe have made a lot of mistakes, but he's got us right where he wants us, and just following his voice and his footsteps will lead us to where we need to go. So God ordains things in people's lives uh, for a reason. You know, he changes the times and the seasons. Okay, not only physically, but maybe the seasons of your life. Maybe the times in your life, okay? He dis he deposes kings and rulers. God raises up rulers and, and, and people in positions of power for special times, for special times, whether we like them or not, okay? Um, and maybe we don't think they belong there, or maybe we think that they do. Um, God is in charge, okay? God is in charge of all of it. And the sooner we hold on to that and believe that and trust that we're going to be better off and we're going to have a, a more peaceful world um, if we just trust in God uh, for what he's provided for us and around us. Um, so I do think that jealousy, greed, envy, they're so pertinent in the world around us. Um, and if we just trust that God has us right where he wants us, he gives us what we need in, in, in the right time and he's an on-time God. Um, he may not come when we want him. He may not do what we want right on time, but he's, or uh, yeah, he may not do what we want uh, right away. But in his time, he makes it all happen. And that's something I'm learning day to day. Um, that's something that I'm trying to. Um, I know it in my head, but I'm trying to get it down to my heart. Um, and so, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing to just trust that God. Um, gives us what we need when we want something else uh, right now or that he's put us in positions for such a time as this and um, he, he will call us to what we're supposed to do if we just trust in him we need to listen you know um, people people say you know God's not real he didn't answer my prayer well every prayer is answered it may not be in the answer you like but it's in the answer that God wishes for your life or that God thinks is best for you. God knows what's best for you. There's so many things I prayed for that I'm glad God didn't answer. And, you know, so, you know, a lot of times our prayers maybe shouldn't be answered in the way that we want them. But each prayer is answered, uh, whether it's yes, no, or not yet. And so we need to trust that. Um, and the sooner we trust that, we will negate feelings of jealousy and envy. Um, so I think I covered a lot. But <laughs> what, what stemmed this was for forgiveness of your past, forgiving your past for what you did not have um, so that you can live a better life now. You can't do anything about what happened in the past. You can't do anything about um, maybe the way you reacted. 
or the way that you responded, or you can't do anything about the way you were brought up. You can't do anything about uh, the situation that you lived in, but you do have a choice with today. You have a choice with today on how to be, how to react. You have a choice today of how, if you're going to choose joy or not. Um, so we we are given choices today uh, of how we can respond. Uh, but forgiveness of the past will really help us not feel jealous um, because God has us right where he wants us. And God will do what he needs to do in our lives. We just need to trust that that's what he's doing. So trust that God has us right where he wants us. He's in charge of it all. He's in charge of the times, the seasons. Uh, the rulers of the world, um, you know, and I'm not saying that he permits their actions, um, but he does allow their authority. And I mean, and even if you read, I'm reading the uh, Old Testament, I'm in Kings right now, and the rulers that were um, in charge, they did not always do what God wanted them to do. And they still ruled. Um, and then after, you know, after a while, there came some good kings. Um, and they, they ruled in God's favor. Um, and so, you know, we need to think about in the, in the, good, in the, time, in the good and the bad times, um, the authorities that are placed in our, our lives or the seasons that we're in around us, what are they teaching us? What are they teaching us? What what can I learn from this? How does this draw me closer to God? Am I learning something about God's character? Um, is God drawing me closer to himself? With everything, God's drawing us closer to him. So, um, and in addition, I mean, I think that this commandment that God reveals to us is also, um, uh, cor it, cor it correlates with the, um, uh, the other commandment that says you should have no other gods besides me. You know, what, what are you putting in place of God? Are you putting um, what another person has in the place of God that you want more than what God has given you? Um, are you wanting uh, what they have more than, yeah, are you wanting more than what, more, are you wanting what they have more than what God has given you? Or are you making that a God? Are you making that more of a priority than seeking God's face? Uh, one of my favorite theologians said, we need to seek God's face and not his hand. And we need to seek his face always rather than his hand. Um, God is not a genie um, that just grants us our request, but he's a friend. He's a friend and he is our, our ruler. He's our guide. Um, and so he's not a genie. And I think we often think that he is you know uh, but he's our friend and he wants to he wants to spend time with us so i digress i think i covered a lot today um but um yeah just let's let's trust god um that he has us right where he wants us and uh, forgive your past so friends um let's pray together before we close and if you like this please uh like and share with a friend and don't forget to tune in next week for the Weekly Wisdom Wednesday podcast. And if you like if you like this and you like more inspiration, check out my website, philcaffey.com. And um, you can find some uh, music there and some additional blogs and podcasts. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, you're the ruler of all things. And... We thank you for all that you do in us, through us, and around us, even when we don't understand it, because it teaches us something. Um, we, Jesus, we trust that you're guiding us to where we need to go. And we trust that when we, when we give our lives to you, you're leading us into the decisions that and the paths that you would have us go that lead us closer to you and that make a better world. Um, we pray that you would give us wisdom 
in following your path, Lord God, and so that we can make this world a better place. Um, Lord, just guide us so that we don't live envious of others, um, but may we be satisfied of what we have. Uh, may, we, may we be content in what you've given us for this time. Lord, give us a spirit of gratitude so that we can continuously be thankful for the good, the bad, the ugly, as it all teaches us something and draws us closer to you. And we pray this all through Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much, friends, for tuning in today, and have a great rest of your week.